and welcome to Unexplainable Stories of Hope and Healing. I am Erica Wiggenhorn and today we are going to be talking about rejection. Have you ever felt rejected in a situation? Um, my beautiful friend Dina is here with us today and I am so excited for you to meet her and talk a little bit about her story of rejection and the things that are happening in her life today. So Dina, thank you for thank being you. here. Uh, tell us a little bit about, um, tell us a little bit about your story and where did these feelings of rejection originate in your life? Well, I believe they stemmed from the separation of my parents, like not having them in my life, you know, mm -hmm. just being kind of going back and forth between them and different family members. Mm -hmm. But I believe that ultimately my rejection and insecurity stemmed from the sexual abuse that I had in my life. Okay. So a lot of times when you think sexual abuse, you would think like, um, like things that are done physically to you. So that has been the case, but it also has been things that have either been done in front of me and then things that I'm asked to do, like things that were things that have been asked of me to do for somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, and this happened to me by three men that I respected in my life and that I looked up to. So mm -hmm. when that happened, it pretty much really kind of messed me up. Yeah. mentally yeah and it just kind of made me feel like there was something wrong with me and like I had something on my forehead like hey mess with me or mm -hmm. you know and so it just made me feel like honestly like there was something wrong with me and that and that affected me for a long for a long time mm -hmm. and then a little bit later in life you know so I went back and forth with different family members and then I was in um, a home for a while Mm -hmm. of, you know, of a family member up until I graduated. And um, pretty much before I graduated, I was introduced to for some friends kind of, you know, getting involved in drugs pretty soon, kind of smoking pot and drinking. And then it kind of led to a little bit more heavier drug. Mm -hmm. And then I believe that honestly, after I graduated high school, I really didn't have any like goals or any like ambition or anything like really planned. And I kind of just went down like the wrong path. And that led to many years, like 15 years of on and off use of, use of drugs and just kind of like unhealthy relationships and mm -hmm. unhealthy behaviors. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually it ended up landing me in jail, in prison because of some bad choices that I'd made. Mm -hmm. And being there was one of the most embarrassing devastating places in my life like it was one of the most lowest places that I've yeah. ever been and never thought that I would ever be sure. because for the most part like I've always seen myself as even though I was a little bit feeling like rejected and feared a lot of things I was overall a really good person you know what I mean I wasn't mm -hmm. so for me to be there it was just kind of like I couldn't even believe that I was there or made mm -hmm. the choices that I did sure. to get there so that was that was like one of like the lowest points in my life. Mm -hmm. And there I experienced and was introduced to Jesus Christ. Like, I mean, I, I knew of him, but I've never, I never went to church. I never had any kind of relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And there I was basically just completely broken. I mean, and that's a mm -hmm. lot of times what really Jesus is like, that's what it really kind of takes to, 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 to change your life and to give your life to the Lord, right? Yeah. Because it completely strips you from everything. Sure. And that's pretty much basically what had happened, mm -hmm. you know, and I was um, started to get to know this guy, Jesus, by going to church. And then <laughs> sure enough, I kind of wanted to know some more about him. And yeah. then, then in there, I uh, just started to read the word. Mm -hmm. And there was a time that I... Um, was sitting on my bunk one day and I decided to read Psalms 119 and I was pretty much like at a pretty much low point in my life and I just mm -hmm. felt like once I opened up the Bible it's like pretty much the longest psalm I just felt like <laughs> it was the it was the craziest thing all of a sudden I'm, I'm reading everything that I never told anybody mm -hmm. you know all the feelings that I had that nobody ever really knew just things that that have happened that I but but I was just then and there that the Lord was revealing to me that he knew and mm -hmm. that he was there and yeah. that he was like, 
you are basically, you're going to be okay and that I do have you. And all those things that you thought that nobody knows, I know. Mm. And I'm just like, wow, you know, that was yeah. pretty, pretty He amazing. saw your heart. He did. He saw your heart. Yeah. And he loved you. Yeah. He did. That's beautiful. Yeah, it That's was beautiful. truly amazing. But not only did you meet Jesus mm. in prison, mm. you also began to experience a new type of community. Yeah. that you had never experienced before with your sisters in Christ right. within prison. Right. Describe that Christian community. Well, it was just like truly amazing because you have a lot of women that are there going through whatever it is that they were struggling with and they're going through and they're all experiencing Jesus like at the same time. Yeah. And then you have these ladies that are coming in that are um, just coming in to give Bible studies or coming in to volunteer their time or whatever. And they were just like allowing just teaching us about God and teaching us that everything is going to be okay. And they were so willing to just like give them, them give them themselves freely. Mm -hmm. And it, it truly was, it was just like, and it was just really awesome because I really had never experienced really having anybody in my life like that. And then mm -hmm. for them to just, um, just teaching me about God and community and yeah, teaching me like, to realize like why I do the things that I do. You know what I mean? We really can't like change <clears throat> what we do until we know why we do what we do. Well, Dina, I mm -hmm. really want to thank you for sharing your story with us today. I know it wasn't an easy story yeah. to tell, but I know there are a lot of women out there that struggle with that feeling, those feelings of rejection it's and true. those feelings of feeling unworthy mm -hmm. and so they shrink back they shrink back from community they shrink back from having healthy authentic relationships yeah. modeling that for their daughters or their sons um trying to break some of those those patterns mm -hmm. right into the next generation so thank you for being brave and sharing your story today um i know <coughs> it definitely encouraged and inspired me and i'm sure it encouraged and inspired um, women out there as well. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, friend, we sure hope that you were encouraged and inspired by Dina's story today, Unexplainable Stories of Hope and Healing in the Wake of Rejection. And if so, we invite you to like, comment, and share. Um, I think we can all relate to feeling rejected in some way, shape, or form in our life. And maybe you'd like to share your story with us and we would be honored to pray for you. Uh, if you would like to know more about this unexplainable Jesus that has radically changed Dina's life, uh, we would invite you to check out our website at ericawiggenhorn.com. But mostly, friend, what we pray for you today is that you would know that while life may often throw the unexpected at us, unexplainable Jesus is always more than enough. Thanks for watching and God bless.